welcome back to the channel all right so this video is basically a part two video of a part one that was done the video is basically explaining a crop investigation and cost analysis sba for agriculture science students it is in detail everything you need to know about your crop investigation and crop analysis is explained in this video please watch to the end watch from beginning to the end and if you have not yet subscribed please hit, hit the subscribe button now it is for everyone in the caribbean all cxc agriculture science students in the caribbean so just share the video with anyone that will be doing agriculture science in the caribbean all right so let's get into detail so as i said this is a part two and the part one i'll leave it in the description below and also at the end of this video i'll attach that link all right so let's get into it the cost analysis is basically a comparison of two financial statements and as i said in the previous video that the investigation and the cost analysis they both have two different rubrics i'm going to show you the rubric shortly for the cost analysis i want to point out the two different statements some persons would call it budgets all right so some teacher might say you compare the projected budget with the actual budget all right but it is not appropriate to say actual budget because a budget is a plan that is not yet executed it's just a financial plan so you would call it the actual income and expenditure statement instead so let's go down and look at the projected budget and the actual income and expense statement all right so we're basically going to compare the two of them all right so here we have the, them side by side we have the two statements side by side so what the cost analysis is basically about in your sba is to compare these two statements so here we have over the left side we have the projected budget here so as you see underneath that i also put another name for it in bracket which is the projected income and expenditure statement so projected means it is done before you actually start your investigation before you set up your experiment you will normally do a budget and that is very important for you to learn as a business person not just an agriculturist but a business person any form of business or enterprise you're going to start it's best to always start by producing um or preparing a budget so it's just a financial plan that you will put together before you start the project all right so this is done before you start the project so and you will use the real prices the current prices at the time so if you're going to do this projected budget for say today you start your sba today you should go at the farm stores and get the real price for those products not makeup prices so when you're actually doing it you should go and get your real prices all right so over on this side the right side we have what we said the actual income and expenditure statement so it is not appropriate to say actual budget because this is the actual spending which we call expense actual income and actual profit or loss i'll explain more in detail as we go along all right so it's very clear that you understand the headings so so the cost analysis involves comparing a projected budget with the actual income and expenditure all right so this one the projected budget is done before you start your sba it should be done first then the actual income this one is done when you're ready to spend the money and set up your experiment or your project what you actually all the money you spend that would be your expense after you sell the crops all those income you get from sale would be here and then you work out profit or loss or gross margin if you in some cases for some persons all right so if it's gross margin you're going to work out here it means you would basically not add the fixed cost in it it's just the variable cost if you're using the variable cost take it and take that away from your income you'll get gross margin so in this case it wouldn't be appropriate to say profit here you would say gross margin so very important let's go to the rubric see how you will be graded for this comparison and then we'll come back to this statement okay so here we are the mark scheme for the cost analysis or we could also call it a rubric the rubric for the cost analysis all right so it's in a table so in this column here we have the item the second column the criteria the third column the score all right so look at, let us look at the first item which is speaking about here the projected complete budget so in the, the projected budget it values three marks 
So by you just having your projected budget, the complete budget, you have all the criteria you need to have for that budget, you'll get a total of three marks. So let's go over to the criteria. So here, the first criteria is the projected income. So once you have the income recorded, you get one mark for that. All right. It has also the projected expenditure. Once it has the expenditure, you get one mark for that. You work out the profit or loss, which you call maybe the sur you call that the surplus or the shortfall. Surplus, surplus here would be in the profit. Shortfall would be lost. You calculate that correctly, you get one mark. So, very important. So when the assessor come to assess the cost analysis, they'll go through and check all the calculations. If they find situations where the calculations are incorrect, you're going to lose one mark. So you have to pay attention to your calculation. Go through it as thoroughly as possible. As a matter of fact, use Microsoft Excel to do your budgets. That way, you will not make mistakes that easily. All right, so let's go down to the second high level, income and expenditure. Again, that's three marks. So you have in your actual income and expenditure statement, you will get three a total of three marks if you have everything in the criteria. So once you have all the information on the income, you'll get one mark. So here, income also means the sale of the producer. When you speak about sale of the producer, you're actually speaking about the income. All right, the next criteria is the expenditure. You have your expenditure, that's one mark. You have the surplus and the shortfall, that's one mark. Okay, so by having the projected budget and the actual income and expenditure statement in your cost analysis calculated properly, then you can score easily a maximum of six marks. All right, so let's get to the third and final item. The comparison of the projected and actual income expenditure surplus or shortfall so you're going to do this in a paragraph so i will explain all of that when i get back to the sba however let's go over to the criteria so the first criteria here says provides a full and accurate comparison of all three parameters so the parameters that they're talking about here is the income expenditure and surplus so once you compare all three in full you acquire the maximum mark, which is four. If you partially compare all three parameters, so you don't go in detail, you missed out some points that you should have, then you only get three marks. If you correctly compare any two parameters, you get two. So, for example, you compare the income and the expenditure, but you did not do the surplus or shortfall, you'll only acquire two marks. If you completely compare any one parameter, you'll get one mark. Say, if you only do the income alone, for example, and it's correct, you get one. If the others are wrong, you'll not get more than one. All right, so you have to compare them correctly. Make sure you are getting your comparison from your statements. All right, so you have to go through, and I'll, I'll show you how to compare them. If you did not attempt to compare any parameter, that's zero. All right, so for your cost analysis, you will acquire a total of 10 marks for that. And on the record sheets, in the teacher's mark book and the assessor sheet, it will be recorded out of 10. All right, so that's good. All right, so let's go over back to the project and I'll show you exactly now what was done in that SBA. Okay, so here we have the projected budget that was used in this SBA. All right, so of course, as I said, you have the expenditure, so you would list all the items, right? You would put the quantity that you need, right? You also work out the unit cost and then the total. Now, as it says, you will be marked according to how you correctly calculate the, your total. So you have to make sure you, if you're using your calculator, go over them keenly. Or as I said, if you use Microsoft Excel, it will automatically calculate them for you. And more likely, you will not make mistakes that easily. So that is a different video. So you can look out for that video in the future. How to basically make your projected budgets in your excel all right so that's another video so of course here you add up your total expense and you'll put it over here so in this case total expense here is 173,000 is 173,245 dollars all right so you need to also show that you need to show your total very important then you go right down to your income so we have here the bundle of kalaloo and it was projected that we would harvest the 24 pounds all right and the total sale we propose we will we would collect was three thousand six hundred dollars and of course we also predicted that we would sell our color 125 dollars per pound 
and the profit and loss to calculate that you take away the total expense from the total income here we have negative 169 dollars 645 dollars so this is reflecting a loss important point as now when you are preparing your projected budget you have to have experience so for example you need you information from your teacher to help you with that or a farmer so for example if you notice we said that one plant is expected to produce one pound of color one plant may, might produce more than one pound of color but to work out your projected budget you have to make predictions it might not be so all right it might not be so by the time you establish your your budget all right so this is the projected one you would go to the farm stores and get the real cost at the time right you would not make up your cost so all these unit costs over here those were real costs at the time this budget was done all right the students went to the farm store and get these current costs at the time now the actual income and expenditure so for the expense you see where we use the buckets the color loose seedlings the 20 20 fertilizer the white lime the clear plastic you make sure all the calculations are done correctly and you have your total the income it reflected that 34.88 pounds of color was harvested at this time it was sold for 100 dollars per pound and the total was 3488 and then the gross margin was calculated and why we said gross margin to be accurate it's because we did not include the fixed cost into this expense we have a loss of four thousand four hundred and two dollars all right so so but by just having these two financial statements correctly calculated you are looking at six marks already all right so let's move down to the next item the comparison of the cost analysis now the parameters so here we are going to compare the parameters which are the expense the income and the profit or loss. all right so this comparison here as I pointed out, it values four marks. When you're doing your comparisons, what you would do, you go up to the budgets, put them side by side. So we're going to put them side by side. This is the best way to do it. So when you do that, you're going to try to find out the main differences and the main similarities. So that's the key you need to remember. When you're comparing them, you're going to go through each of them and look for the main differences and the main similarity so if it's a minor difference or a minor similarity you would not pay that much attention you want to pay attention to the major differences and the major similarities on my left hand here is the projected budget so let's look at the expense section so looking at this expense you go over we see where the cost here for the buckets we said we would need 24 and the cost is one thousand dollars per bucket which is a total of twenty four thousand dollars now let's go over to the actual income statement and look clearly you can see that these buckets instead of acquiring them for one thousand dollars as was projected they were purchased for two hundred dollars each so that's a big difference so there you got a total of four thousand eight hundred dollars when you look over to the projected budget it was calculated as twenty four thousand so right there you identify a big difference and the different why you have that difference is because at the hardware the first hand buckets they are really one thousand dollars at the time but what happened the students they bought these buckets at the supermarket the used buckets instead and they got them at a cheaper rate so the actual spending there is much less so in your comparison you have to mention that right you have to mention that that's a big difference so we will go down and read about what we are in the expenditure so you'll see how we do it but yeah, so you have to mention this big difference right there. All right, so you you go through and look for other differences. So you have to explain the reason why there's such a big difference. You are required to also state that reason when you are doing your comparison. Um, also, if you notice, over here in the projected budget, we include the cost for the greenhouse, the land, all their tools. In the actual income statement, we did not use any greenhouse or tools here because the school provide those tools. So this would amount to certain amount of expense why the actual income is far less than those of the projected you would have to add up those and also point out that difference all right so let's go down to see what was in this sba all right so here we have the expenditure so of course as i said remember that the font is times new roman and the font size is 12. 
But like this heading, you could use 14 for this heading. Alright? But the rest of it, double space, 12. Font size 12. Alright, so let's read. The projected expenditure was based off how much money we thought that we would have to spend. And the actual expenditure is how much money we spent. Alright? The projected expenditure was more than the actual expenditure by $165,355. So, of course, you would do some calculations you would, and you add your figures. So, when you're doing this comparison, you add your figures to back up what you are saying. Very, very important. Alright? This was impacted significantly by the drastic decrease in actual expense and we put the amount of decrease for buckets purchased as compared to the projected expenditure for buckets $24,000 alright so in your comparison you use terms like drastic decrease or you know drastic increase significantly and you back that up with your calculations alright next sentence the buckets 24 total were projected to be purchased from the hardware at a cost of $1,000 for each. However, the buckets were actually purchased from the supermarkets at a retail price of $200 each. The amount of money that we would have to spend was cut short due to some equipment, greenhouse, scale basin, basket, cutting board, water pan, ground for manure, being provided cost-free by the school. So, of course, you list the items here. Very important. Just don't state that the amount of money that we would have to spend was cut short. You need to back that up by stating them in the comparison. So, if it is green house that you cut short, you state it. If it's a machete, you state it. Water pants, you state it. Also, you remember your reason was explained. So, your point was explained, was stated. You have your figures to back that up and also your reason why have that change all right good all right so the income let's go up to the income all right so let's line up the incomes together let's look at the income for any similarities or differences so what you need to do is to line them up so if you know how to do this on your laptop it would be very effective for you so you line them up so you look at this we can see that the amount of pounds of Kalalu that were projected to be acquired was 24 pounds. However, over the actual income, 34 and 88 pounds of Kalalu were, were acquired. So that's a big difference. One is 24 and one is 38. So that you have an increase right here, right? From 24 to 34. Now, the unit cost that was projected for the color loot to be sold was $125 per pound. Over here, you see where it was sold for $100 per pound. So that again is a big difference. So you have to mention that in your comparison and give reasons. Alright, so let's go back down to the income. Alright, so let's read what we have in the income. The projected budget income referred to the color loot that would be sold. The actual income referred to the amount of color loot that were so the projected income was more than the actual income by only 112 dollars so you make a statement there right state your figure good to back that up this resulted because there was a lower actual selling price and you put your figure to back that up than the projected selling price which is 125 dollars post up and you put in your figures to back that up even though the actual quantity of Kalalu harvested, 34 and 88 pounds, was greater than the projected total quantity of Kalalu to be harvested, 24 pounds, was greater, the reduced income was mainly influenced by the reduced actual selling price. Alright, so remember to identify your main differences, use up your figures to for your proof. And also give your reasons. So let's move to the surplus and shortfall. So let's go back up and so put your two statements together. Alright, so the calculation for the two statements were done. Putting the two profit or loss together here, you can see that a big similarity is that both of them reflect a loss. Alright? 
So that could be in your comparison. Both of them reflected a lost. That's a big similarity right there. Alright. Now the difference between the two, if there is any difference, is that one is significantly higher than the other. So the for the projected budget it was $169,645. While with the actual lost it's $4,402. So it's a great difference in lost. So alright, so you have to mention that and you give the reason. And we know the reason already. It's because the expenditure was very high over here. Even though the projected income was higher than the actual income over here, the loss was greater because of the expense. The total expenditure was greater for the projected budget. The reason for this big difference in the projected budget is because of the expense. The expenditure was very high. All right, that's why the loss was greater. So you have to explain that now in your comparison below. So let's go to the comparison. All right, so let's read what we have at the surplus and shortfall. Let's read both the projected statement and the actual statement reflected a loss. However, the loss reflected by the projected budget was far greater than that of the actual statement, which resulted from a number of expensive fixed inputs, land, greenhouse, etc., that were factored into the projected budget, which was not into the actual income and expenditure statement. All right, so this has take us now to the end of the cost analysis. So I hope that you use this sample as best as you can. Please spend the time to go through it. And also remember to share the video. It is for any CXC agricultural science student from anywhere in the Caribbean. Okay, so Please look out for more similar videos. I'm going to do a cost analysis on the broiler production soon. So remember to subscribe to the channel so you can get automatic update from YouTube. Thanks for viewing.